What is going on fellow web developers? My name is Solopots and in today's video we're going to be creating a working contact form so people can contact you from your website. So as you can see we've got some basic styling, a basic little web page. We're not going to go over to CSS today but we will go over all the PHP and HTML needed to create a working uh, PHP form, contact form. We're also going to be using SendGrid API for this because it's the easiest and most efficient way to do it in my opinion and also it starts off being free and only if you start making a lot of contacts will it ever become paid. So let's actually start here. So let's say my name is Tyler Potts, I have a test at test.com. Now you could put in your real, addre a real address here and we could set up a way for it to send a thank you, you've sent your email, but we're not going to do that for this tutorial, we're just going to send one directly to us. So in here, I'm going to put in the subject, I'm going to put, let's just say, awesome source, and let's just put in a message, this is a test email, loads of exclamation marks, and let's hit send. So now this is going to start sending, it's going to contact SendGrid, and it's going to send the email and give us a response. So if it's successful, it's say email sent successfully. Now if we go in my actual Gmail account here, which it sends, so you can see I created a test box, and it's gone straight into our email. And as you can see, it comes through, says contact form email, name Tyler Potts, email address, and this is a test email. So now I can go and message uh, this or email back uh, this um, or reply to his message, which is really awesome. So let's just delete that. Let's go back here and there you go. So let's get started with the tutorial. Today's video is brought to you by Cloudways, a managed cloud hosting platform for PHP based applications. Cloudways takes over all server management and security hassles to let you solely focus on your business. Their custom stack provides performance boosts, managed backups that keep your apps safe and a staging environment that lets you test code without breaking the live site. Plus, pre-configured composer and integrated git make deployments a breeze and you get a choice between five top cloud providers, including DigitalOcean, AWS, Linode, GCE, and Fulture. With Cloudways, you not only get flexibility, but peace of mind. So if you're an agency or an e-commerce store owner, Cloudways is a great fit for all your managed hosting requirements. And I particularly like their slogan too, moving dreams forward. It fits what they do, don't forget to use promo code TylerP to get up to one month free hosting with $15 free hosting credit. Okay guys, so one thing you're going to need to get this to work is you're going to need some sort of Apache or Nginx surfer. So I'm going to be using Apache or a MAMP surfer that's going to be using Apache. And if you want to download this, MAMP is actually free. You can get MAMP Pro, which is an amazing tool, by the way. This isn't sponsored, this part. <laughs> I'm just saying MAMP Pro is actually really cool and it's really useful. Uh, but I'm going to be using MAMP, the free version, just so you guys can see how this works. So I'm going to hit Preferences. I'm going to go to Surf and I'm going to click Choose. So now we're going to choose a directory that I've set up. So let's go to Personal, Tutorials. PHP and PHP Mail YouTube and as you can see I've set up an, a basic index I've got my CSS and just a composer file in there so let's just choose this for now click OK now what we can do is we can hit start and what this could do is going to open up our starting web page it's going to ask for my password there we go and now it should take it should start the surface and we should be able to, there you go, so now I can click my website, and here you go, we've got this basic contact form with literally a blank container holding nothing in it yet, and as you can see, it's just got some menu for aesthetics, but here you go, so this is what we're starting with, so let's go to our HTML, so as you can see here, we already have a basic layout set up, again, you can just embed this form however you want into your application, as you hear, we have this container, um, which we're going to be able to add our HTML form in. I've also got this script because we're going to be doing some URL magic later on to make the um, success message not show in the uh, URL. Uh, but I'll get, get we'll get to that towards the end. So actually here we've got our main CSS. Now this will be available in the Git repo in the description. If I forget to put the link, please just remind me in the comments. I know I will get you that link straight away. So as you can see, just a bunch of basic stuff for now. Um, it's not very hard. It's quite simple. It's um, like 100, 200 lines almost. And there you go. And we also have this composer.json. Now you will need to install composer. I won't go over this in this video, but I have got a get inside with PHP and get inside with Laravel, which you can go check out to how to install um, composer if you need to. So we're going to set up this package. It's just going to have a require send grid forward slash send grid um, version seven or above um, or the latest version of seven, sorry. Um, and there you go. So this is the what we're going to be installing. So to install that, we're going to press control 
option T and that's going to open up our integrated terminal in here or you can go straight to a terminal or a command prompt um, and inside the correct directory we're just going to run composer install oh, composter uh, <laughs> that's not what we're looking for different thing and install there we go and this is going to install the send grid dependencies we need to actually be able to um, well contact connect with SendGrid's API. Another thing we're going to need is actually a SendGrid API key. And we could also, oh, I'll create a folder. We need to create a new file called env. And I'm going to do env.php, but normally you would do .env and set an env file. But for some reason, my machine does not like that. So we can do it the alternative way. Um, so I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to create API key is equal to an empty pair of strings. Now we need to go get this API key and I'm going to show you how to do that. So if we go over here and we type in sendgrid.com you can get to sendgrid now you can click sign in or get started for free if you're new and sign up with a new account now as you can see here i'm just going to sign straight in it's going to actually ask me to put in it's going to send me a text uh, you have to set two authentication two factor authentication and here we go it's seven oh eight three four one two hit enter or continue and that should now open up our dashboard so this is a fresh um, account I made for this tutorial, um, but we actually in here, if we go to activity with all the test sends I've sent, you'll be able to see all of them in here. So if I just click search, you should be able to see a bunch of test sends from the other day. There you go. So as you can see, loads of test sends I've sent via this and they all get delivered. So let's go into our settings and as you can see, there's an API keys. Now you may have to set up an actual sender, a sender ID before you do it. I've already done this. I don't know why this is still showing up here, but if you do just click create a sender ID and it's straightforward. Let's hit API keys and then we need to generate an API key. So I've already got one here. Um, as you can see, test API. And if I go in here, we could create an API key full access now you can give this restricted access and just give it access to mail send if you only want to be able to send emails but i also want it to be able to track as well so we can also turn on mail send and email activity uh, but for now i'm just gonna click full access i'm just gonna call this um contact form example now i'm just gonna hit uh, oh, i'm just gonna hit create and view and this is going to give us this API key. Now I'm going to copy this. Uh, please make your own API key and not use mine because I'm going to be deleting this as soon as um, I'm done. So I'm going to paste this in here. Um, and there you go. So now we have a SendGrid API key added to our little env.php. Env now we could probably just put this into a different file but for now we'll leave that in there so there you go we've got our api key now inside of our container here let's actually set up our markup for our form so let's just go form um the action is going to be on mail.php so we're going to actually set up a mail.php file and the method is going to be a post so we're going to make a post request to our mail.php file that's what we're going to create we're going to set up a h2 that just says send us a message now you can obviously put whatever you want here and i'm going to create form group and in this form group i'm going to have a label for our name which is going to say name and then we're going to have an input of type text with the class of form element um, and in here we're going to say name and the id will also be name so there we go so that's one. Let's copy this a few times. Now in the second one, we're just going to change this to be email. Uh, lowercase that. And then we'll just say email. And this also could be a type of email. And there we go. In the next one, we're going to have the subject lines. I'm just going to say subject. We're going to say subject. Again, two more subjects. Oh, that's way too many subject now this last one we actually don't need an input field we could put this as a message and where we say name we could say message oh if i can spell nope still can't spell <laughs> and then in here we're gonna have a text area to allow them to enter more contents we're gonna say message message and we don't need the colds or the rows but we do need a class of form element so there you go. We can then add after this an input type of submit with a value of send mail or whatever. Again, whatever you want to put in there. And then once we've done that, we're going to just put here a comment here to say catch success or error. 
So we're going to make a catch success or error down here. But for now, let's actually get this email form sending. So what we need to do is we need to create a new mail.php mail in here. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to open up some PHP tags. That's not how you do PHP tags. My typing today is horrendous. We're going to require in here now, we're going to say fender forward slash autoloads.php. Now, if you put your mail in a folder, you'll need to obviously give it the correct directory. But from here, we're just going to say mail is into fender autoload.php, which will load everything you need um, to get started. We're then going to require our emv.php. Now, normally you would have, well, normally you wouldn't have to require this again. We could actually just go into our emv here, copy out our API key, save that, close that, put this in here, and there you go. Now we have our API key in here, and we don't even need a file. So we could actually just delete our file. Remember, never lose your API key because Sengvi will not show you it again. So you're, if you do lose it, you'll have to create a whole new one. So let's get started with the Sengvi API. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new email. So we're going to say email is equal to a new backslash send grid backslash mail backslash mail function now what this does is it says we're creating a new send grid mail um, which we're going to be able to attach different various things to it um, so in here we're going to start off by saying email and we're going to say set from so now we can set the from address so in here we could put the user's email address so what we could do is here underscore post and we can say email and then we could put in here, oh, sorry, I forgot the ending bracket. And then in, oh, I did, didn't, I just accidentally put it in the wrong place. Uh, and in here, we could just put the user's name. So let's just put in here, post, oh, I'm doing this all wrong, post. And in here, it'll just say name, like that. So there you go. So now we've set the from, from the person who is sending it from my email address. Uh, I actually like to put this, uh, instead of putting this, I like to put in, uh, the website so I'd say the website names to say contact form um, just so I'd put like Tyler Potts contact form or something like that just because it's a bit easier or no reply or something like that just so because I don't want it to say their name or anything in that because that would confuse me and I think someone's actually emailed me directly uh, I'm gonna say set subject and this subject is actually going to be um, just so it goes into my test mailbox I'm gonna put this test here because I've set up a filter for that and then I'm going to actually pass through the um, subject the which we're going to enter in on our front end form here and then in the email we're going to say email we're going to say add to and we're going to say tylerpotsdef at gmail.com which is my email address and then so this is who we're going to send the email to so we're going to say Tyler Potts and there you go so we've got a set from a set subject and an add to which is really good now we need to actually add our content now we're going to be using html for this but you can also use plain text as well so let's go in here email add con oh, content now in here we need the type so we're going to say forward slash html we could put forward slash plain which means it would just be plain text but we want to use some markup in here as well so let's actually break this down to a new line break that down to a new line if i could do that and then in here we're actually going to start our new contact form so in here we're going to say h1 and we're just going to say contact form email slash h1 and we're going to put a dot, which means we're going to concatenate a string onto it. So we're going to put another diff um, name. And then in here, we could do dot post underscore name dot. And again, a diff. Uh, sorry, I was supposed to use those. And then we could do another dot. And then we could do another diff, which is going to be our email. Um, and you just get the gist. So we could actually copy the name here. Copy. We can actually copy this whole thing paste and we could do this one last time which is going to be message capital m and let's change this to be email and let's change this to be our message now we don't need the final dot at the end because obviously there's nothing else to go on it and there you go so that is now added our markup for our actual content now you can add in whatever you want here you could add a lot more content in here you could add images you could do what you want um, i'm not gonna go over that in this video but as you can see you can so this is just a simple contact form there now we need to actually apply our send grid api key else it will not work so we need to do a back flat slash send grid and we just need to say api key so this now we're passing through our api key into our send grid and now we can do a try and catch. We're going to say try. 
which gives give us a try and catch. And then here we're going to say we're going to get a response from our SG. And then we're going to send. And then we're going to send the email we're creating here. So we're getting the email. We're using the SendGrid API. And we're going to send it this email. And this is actually going to contact. It's going to check if our API key is correct. It's going to make a request and it's going to send it. We're then going to go in here. I'm going to say location slash. We just need to go slash. And then we're going to say success is equal to dot response status code and there you go so we're going to check what the status code is and that's going to be able to tell us if we're um uh if we've got an error or anything here and now this is going for throwable we're actually going to change this to be an exception and we're just going to pass e and we're just going to say header location is equal to slash success equal to zero so if i can spell success right so what we're doing here is we're saying if this fails, um, if we get any error, we're just going to throw an error and we'll display an error on screen. And there you go. So that is all we need for our mail. There's actually it fully set up. And in our index, you can see we've got this here. So let's actually go and test this now. So let's go to our MAMP. Let's make sure it's running, which it is. So we can go over here, go to our contact form, hit refresh. And as you can see, we've now got our contact form here. So let's try this. Let's say my name is, uh, what's a cool name? Uh, John Wick. My name is John Wick. My email address is john.wick at dog.com. Um, and the subject will be, where's my pencil? Um, and then the subject will be, uh, there's a test. Because I can't think of anything else witty to say. And then we're going to hit send. And this is going to start loading. As you see, we get a success 202, which means it's actually sent. So if we go into our test box, hit refresh. You can see the email has come straight through to our inbox. And actually, that means it's working perfectly fine. But uh, we actually, you can see we get a success 202. But we don't actually know that. Our, if you don't look in the URL, you don't know that it's been successful or not. And to be fair, people might not even know what that means. Um, so you can see this. So we need to display to the user on screen what's happening. So in our catch success or um, error, we're going to say PHP if, and then we're going to use a get. We're going to find the success we get in the URL. And we're going to say if that's equal to 202, which is a successful send, we're then going to show a dot success. Again, I can't spell success today. A success, which just say email sent success successfully so how you spell successfully oh my god you know when you read something too many times that's what i've got right now and then we're going to say else if and we're going to say else if it's not empty so along this there's actually a error in our success we're going to say and and if the get six Again, I still spelt success wrong. It's not equal to 202. So if it's equal to anything else, because we can get 404, 500, or other statuses as well. Um, so we're just checking if it's not 202, because 202 is just a sent successfully. Um, then we're going to just end if down here. But in here, we're going to do dot error. And we're just going to say, there's been an error. Please try again later. Hit save. And now, if we go back here and we refresh, you can see we get email sent successfully. Now, we can delete this from our URL bar here, and we can try again. So let's just put in here, uh, Tyler, test at test.com, uh, test, this is a test, and hit send. Now, this is going to load for a second, and it's going to say email sent successfully. So if we go to our inbox again, go back, refresh, and there you go. We got another contact form that says test, uh, contact form, and it gives us the new information, which is great. But what happened, I want to, we need to check if it's going to error. So let's go into our mail and just quickly comment out our or mess up our API by putting like a few extra characters. Actually, you know what that might. Just delete the SG off the start. Hit save. Let's go back here. So if we've got the wrong IP address, let's delete the success again. Let's put in another one. Uh, my name is error muck error. Uh, this is error at please work.com and the subject will be this one even make it to you this won't make it to your inbox and this is just gonna say test and if we hit send you're gonna see we get a success 401 which means we actually have an error which it isn't displaying on screen right now which isn't good that means something is not working so let's go back to our 
Uh, check it. Oh, and it's because I spelt success wrong. <laughs> of course I did. Someone should, was probably shouting that at me. So if we refresh here, you can see there's been an error. Please try again later. There you go. But this is really annoying because every time we refresh the page now, it says there's been an error. Let's say if we had um, if we had a success 202, you can see it says email said successfully. So now this is where the JavaScript comes in. So we're literally going to write one line of JavaScript, which is going to be window dot history dot push state, uh, and then we're going to say document dot title. And we then we'll just go pass through slash. Now you have to obviously put if you're if this is your contact page, you have to put contact or whatever you need to put there. But it's actually just going to reset your. Um, it's going to remove all your queries from your query string. So there you go. We've got that. And now if we go back and we refresh, you can see it's actually removed our query string. So there you go. So now if we refresh. It's not going to show up again. So let's try this one last time. Let's say my name is Tyler Potts. My email is uh, tylerpottsdef at gmail.com. Subject, um, please work. Um, this is definitely going to work. There you go. And let's hit send. There's been an error. Please try again later. And guys, I forgot to add back in the SG dot <laughs> to our um, API key. So let's try this one more time. So if we refresh, you can see that actually disappears. It's something it doesn't stay, which is great. Let's just say Tyler Potts test at test.com uh, test and test. And let's hit send email. And there you go. Email has sent successfully. If we go to our test box, refresh, you can see we get another test email address here. Um, and a second one where I misspell my net. Well, accidentally capitalize the Y in my name. And there you go. So that is how you create a working successful HTML email contact form HTML and php contact form so guys i hope you've learned something new if you have don't forget to leave a thumbs up smash that subscribe button and i will see you in the next video thanks for tuning in and peace out